Hi everyone. So for this soap today, we are using the new Bewitched Orchid from Brambleberry, which uh, foreshadowing behaves amazing and smells fantastic. If you didn't see my brief little review of the entire collection, it's on my Instagram. I might upload it onto YouTube later. Uh, it's not a very long one, but it's at least gives you some idea of what everything smells like. Anyway, so for this soap, I wanted to go a little bit more fun, I guess is the word for it. I had these beautiful cauldron molds from Lisa, and I wanted to try to do a soap that was a little offbeat from the normal fun Halloween that I've done most of this collection. And I was looking at it, and I was like, wouldn't it be fun to do like a little love potion sort of soap? But, you know, I, I really feel like magic, it comes at a price, right? So I wanted to make a nod to that and add some of the spooky little embeds you're about to see. So at this point, I'm just dividing out my oils. I skipped to the part where I've already mixed it, uh, not for any particular reason, just because I get a little bored. And so I figured y'all might get a little bored too. So we're at the actual mixing the color stage. I wanted to do an ombre coming from the bottom going up and learning from previous toasts that I've done. I noticed that I, at least twice in this collection, had uh, the misfortune of reversing the ombre in a way where the actual embreds didn't show up really well. So I was really conscious of that for this one. So I'm just kind of getting all of my batter separated out so I have the best chance of getting the colors in a way that'll actually look uh, interesting, appealing, and show off the embeds that I've chosen to use for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the colors in. Um, I used a couple different colors from Nurture Soap. This first one is Celestial Silver and a dash of Lilac Purple, I wanna say. It's Lilac, Lilac Lily something. It's, it's, a light, it's a light nurtured purple color. I will look it up and put it in the comments for all of you. The Celestial Silver from Nurture Soap is one of my favorite colorants. It's a unique purple tinged color, but with my batter, especially because I use so much uh, shea butter and cocoa butter, as well as the goat milk, I find that it goes a little too yellow, which is why you saw me add a little bit of titanium dioxide there just to brighten it up a little bit and make it more silver versus the kind of yellowy gray tinge that it had as I did not find that appealing. I wanted my soap to be spooky, not creepy. The other colors I used uh, were planned really to try to get this soap to make the picture that I was looking for. So this is more of the Celestial Silver and I added uh, more of the Lilac and a touch of uh, Cheshire Cat had a look. Cheshire Cat, I wanna say. Uh, this, again, more purple. And did I add blue? I did add blue. Sorry, looking at my notes while I'm talking is a little weird. I, I'm not sure how I feel about doing this voiceover after I've made the soap. I'm so used to talking during it that I apologize if it's a little awkward. I'm trying to be better, but here we are. Anyway, so this is more the lilac purple. There is nothing else in this except for the lilac purple. I wanted these soft blues and purples and pinks. So the last one we're gonna do, you're gonna see in just a second, is going to be mostly Hollywood pink with, a per, is it pearl? Yeah, velvet pearl. And I also, did I add velvet pearl? Nope, didn't add velvet pearl to that one. That's just that lilac pink, that lilac purple color, which is really nice. I also add a little bit of titanium dioxide to this pink, but you'll see that as we're going in. So this fragrance from Brambleberry, it had a note that it might accelerate a little bit. I did not find it accelerated really at all. It behaved very, very well for me. There was also a note that it might discolor a little bit. I also didn't find that it discolored. That might be because I tend to use a good amount of titanium dioxide in the colors where you'd probably see it the most, which would be in that pink and in that light silver. Titanium dioxide is great because it adds a little bit of uh, a buffer, so to speak, from a you know a vanilla and soap, especially if it's going to tan just a little bit. So here I am mixing in the fragrance. I wasn't sure how it would behave. You can see when I first add it to my batter, it turns almost a neon yellow color. It goes away pretty quickly, but you do see it in the other other ones as I'm mixing the colors in. I don't know what fragrance part does that. It's something that I've seen in a couple of fragrances 
but it, it does happen. I was afraid of it accelerating, so I went ahead and poured this pink first, and then I started working with the other colors. I didn't have to worry. This actually didn't accelerate at all, like I noted, but you'll see me go through and, and get this ready. So first to go in are my little, my little bone embed. I actually only had one of these ready to go. I thought I had two and I didn't uh, because I cut up a little bit <laughs> of them. And you can see in the right um, upper hand corner, my little bones to go on top. So I realized that this fragrance was behaving really well and I didn't wanna to have to stop at each colorant to mix in more of the fragrance. So what I went ahead and did once I was comfortable that it would behave is add the fragrance to all the other colorants, not just the pink. So that way I could kind of go through each color and start the ombre and work it up and down instead of having to stop, add some fragrance, keep going. I wouldn't recommend this. Oh, you can see the yellow there. I wouldn't recommend this if you are really not sure about the fragrance's behavior. I did not test this ahead of time like I should have, I'm like all the things you should not do. Please do not do as I am doing. Listen to what I am saying. Do not just jump off the bridge with your friends. Like, it's just a bad idea. Don't do it. Anyway, so I've jumped off the bridge, the fragrance bridge of just let, let's do this fragrance and see what happens. And I get away with it. Uh, I, I, again, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. Uh, you can also see in this gray here that, that yellow color it turns. The other color that really does this is um, pink peony, really turns, I mean, just a really wonky yellow color and it does turn back, but it scares the daylights out of me. So I was a little nervous about this, but it, it, you can't see it at all in the final soap. So now I've added just a dash of um, the purple and I'm mixing it over on top. Again, this behaved really fantastically. I, I'm doing, I guess, pointy layer, ombre, uh, multiple different techniques. All I'm really trying to do is to get it to look smooth as it's going up. And I think I accomplished this in the final bar. So this is me realizing that uh, past Whitney measured these little bits and cauldrons for a larger mold. And uh, yeah, they don't, <laughs> they don't want to fit. So you're going to see me go through and pinch these off or cut them off one by one to fit the way I want it to. So in my, my vision, for lack of a nicer way to say it, I had the cauldron kind of bubbling over with the bones in it and the bubbles piling out of it and then the bats coming out on top. So this is me kind of trying to make it interesting to make sure there's bubbles on either side of it and that it's all going to flow nicely and make it an interesting picture. The Rest of the soap, I kind of do the same thing. I'm continuing to change the color over, add a little bit of the purple, mix, 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 pour it in, more purple, more purple, and then I'll work my way up into the kind of paley purple, silver, blue color, and then into the foggy silver. This works really well. If you want to do an ombre, you could do it a lot smoother by pouring down the side of a loaf versus pouring straight down. Because I'm using embeds, I didn't really have the option to pour down the wall as easily as if I was not using them. My, my biggest concern, as I noted, was to make sure that my little hearts and, and everything else stood out decently against it. I probably should have gone a little bit darker with parts of this. Like you can tell that heart disappears a little bit, but you know, whatever, live and learn. Here we are. It turned out really cute anyway, so I'm not dissatisfied, but it's always kind of fun to watch these videos afterwards and watch me work and, I don't know, armchair jockey myself about what I was doing. Uh, normally I do this in my text, but I guess now I get to do it while I'm talking, which is worse and better at the same time. Anyway, so I'm just double checking the other fragrances or the other uh, colors now to make sure that they're still liquid. Again, I wasn't quite sure what it would do and I'm just kind of winging it. I did notice that it started to speed up a little bit. So now I'm, I'm hurrying a little bit because I can feel that it's not necessarily turning solid or anything else, but I probably don't want to sit here and, and meander around and hope that it's continued to behave. The rest of the soap, you'll see me place each individual log or column or however you want to call these embed molds I'm alternating with the hearts and the dots because again, I'm looking for that kind of bubbles and hearts and bats and a couple bones to be boiling out of this cauldron, our little love potion here. This 
works out pretty well. I will note that I, because I was in a hurry and worried about the fragrance accelerating, I didn't do a great job of making sure when I pour, you'll see me do it in just a second here, that my bubbles don't go to the outsides of the mold. The only problem in doing in beds like this with a more loose batter is that when you pour, automatically the fluid of the, the fluidity of the batter pushes the embeds to the outside, right? So I think I catch it about halfway through and the, I, I can see that they're moving a little bit much, but you can see I'm trying to pour over versus in the middle, but they do still move around a little bit. So note to any of you who are doing designs like this or future designs like this, just try to make sure you're not making your life harder by pouring in a way that's going to move all your embeds around. I still struggle with this when I'm doing my one pot wonders and I'm adding embeds because it never seems to look like I wanted it to all the time. I, I do seem to have some issues with it moving around. So again, I'm going to put these little columns in, realizing they're too long um, and <laughs> having to just pinch them off. Oh, it's so embarrassing. Oh, well, what are we going to do? I was roasting myself live when I was doing this, and the only reason I am recording this afterwards is because while I was recording this soap and talking, uh, my family was in the pool and enjoying themselves, so I had a lot of open the door, shut the door, and open the door and shut the door, and mom, hey, I want this, and my husband asking me questions, and it, it <laughs> I just couldn't edit around it, so you guys are instead getting me roasting myself after I've made the soap because my family cannot stay out of my studio when I'm making soap, but you know, that's, that's mom life, right? So I've hit the end of my purple and I'm going to save a little bit of it off to the side. I want the top to be pretty. I want it to be interesting. So if you look at the top left-hand corner, you can see I've saved just like the scraping of the pitcher up there. And that's for this soap top, I should say. Uh, again, note to future Whitney, Make sure that when I do this, the colors that I'm going to be decorating with are different enough that you can actually see it. And you will understand why I'm roasting myself with that when we get to the end. Uh, if you've seen the top of the soap already, you will know why I'm saying that. It's because my bones disappear almost completely. I thought that there was enough of a contrast and I was wrong. So that was me putting our little bat in. I'm again just adding more of that pretty steely light silvery blue color and mixing it in with the purple to try to get it um, a, a smoother transition going up. So I'm going to stop talking here because I'm pretty sure this is obvious. All I'm doing is putting in the little soap dough columns. Um, I guess I should talk about that real quick. The bats themselves and the bones and the cauldrons that you see, as well as the hearts, are made from extruder discs from Lisa at I Dream and Soap. The soap dough itself is uh, mostly from sorcery soap dough. There is some soap dough in there. That's my own, uh, my own soap dough. Most of it's from B though. Uh, I think the black cauldrons are the only ones from me, my actual soap. Uh, maybe some of the bones might be white. The ability to make soap like I make and to make these pictures and to tell these stories is because I am so lucky and so treasured and find another acronym or word for lucky. I'm just so lucky uh, that B at Sorcery Soap has adopted me and that I have friends like Lisa who has completely pioneered and changed soap making as anyone knows it. I mean, B has just done amazing, amazing things with soap dough. And then you have Lisa coming along with her um, custom extruder discs. And the combination of the two is just a match made in heaven. So if somehow you have found me and not found them, I urge you strongly to go find them. I would not be the soap maker I am today without these women in my life and their products are amazing and help me make beautiful soap that all of you enjoy. So that little love fest right there got us almost to the end of the soap. I will go ahead and I guess continue to talk about how much I love Lisa and B because it's something that's near and dear to my heart. The... One big thing in our community that I really appreciate about soap making in general is that I feel that as a community, we're really good about lifting each other up and not being cutthroat and trying to encourage each other. It's some of the best friends I've ever made in my life are because I make soap and because I've met them through soap making. 
So I hope that you are lucky enough to also have women like that in your life. I have several women that I treasure and all of them make soap, except for like two, I want to say. And those two that don't make soap, it's just because I haven't taught them yet. Um, they're, they're my adoptive mothers that um, I've known since I was younger. So I feel like it's something that is wonderful. And as I noted, the community is incredible. The big thing that I would like to continue in the community is that everyone continues to share and continues to note where they're inspired. I've seen a little bit of uh, design stealing coming around again, and it happens. It happens everywhere. Every industry is plagued with it, right? Those that create are plagued by those who just kind of want a coattail. And I recently had that happen with a friend, not to me, didn't happen to me uh, yet. I'm sure I've got those copycats out there, but my stuff's just so freaking weird that I don't think anyone wants to try to copy it. Uh, good luck uh, if you want to. Just, you know, tag me. And that's really what it comes back down to, right? Like if you're inspired by somebody and you see something and you're like, wow, I really like that. I want to do that. I'm super inspired by your work. Just give a nod. Uh, I, I can't think of anybody who, uh, maybe one, maybe one or two people that don't take that inspiration as a true compliment. As long as it's inspiration, it's noted as inspiration. Uh, where And what's the difference between inspiration and straight up copying? Glad you asked. You didn't ask, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Uh, the difference is if I see a really cool design that I like, uh, there's, think of one, uh, okay, so one of my favorite designs I've ever seen, and it's a Halloween design, is from B, and she's got these little tiny ghosts hugging a candy corn. It's the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. It's, it's straight up adorable, and I've never seen anything like it. I've never seen anyone do anything like it, certainly not in soap. Uh, but I've never seen it in polymer clay or anything else. B pulled that out of the out of her brain, out of the ether, and just plopped it out into the world. It's freaking cute. Inspiration is somebody who I recently saw who made a similar soap to that, who said she saw B's design, bought her book, made the soap from her recipes, from her book, and then gave all of the inspiration credit to B and said, this is where I found it. This is how I thought of it. This is what helped me create it. And thank you so much, B. You, you helped me make the soap. Amazing. Super cute. I loved it. B loved it. Everyone was really happy. Life goes on. If that same person had, A, just seen the design and tried to copy it, and probably wouldn't have been very successful because B's work is just amazing, and you, know, you always know it immediately, but not tagged her, and not said, hey, this is really something that I learned from somebody else or something I saw somewhere else. It just diminishes my opinion of them. And, I, and I'm nobody, right, in the soap world. Like, I'm just some crazy lady mom who has a bunch of goats and makes soap. And that's, I'm nobody. But I feel like I'm not the only person that feels this way. I can tell you right now. I know at least amongst my friend group, we're not the only people that feel that way. And if... If and when, because it does happen, we see somebody who obviously is inspired by somebody else and doesn't do at least even the barest minimum. I saw this design somewhere on the internet. I'm sorry, I forgot who did it, but it wasn't my original idea. I just really liked it and I wanted to make my hand at it. it I've done that. I've said that. I don't remember. My brain's, my brain's a cluttered, chaotic mess. Uh, I, I have a problem if you don't at least even try, at least even own that you have not thought of this on your own. It's just because the internet is a vast place and the internet is forever. Eventually, the people who you have copied are going to see it and it's, it's a terrible feeling and I don't want that feeling for anyone and it's happened to a friend very recently and uh, the other people in the community that we're all friends with we talked to this person or tried to talk to this person, and I'm not really sure what their reaction was, but it was probably not the one that they would have liked to have some other of your peers saying, hey, you're misbehaving, maybe don't do that, it's a bad idea. But had they just given credit, it would have not been a single issue. We all would have been like, oh, that's great, yeah. 
hey, good job, you tried, you, you, you tried. And it's not as good as maybe, you know, the person who you copied it from, but you tried and you gave credit. Okay, here's your hall pass. So that's Whitney's inspirational quote of the day of thinking about how you're inspired by others' works. And I kind of got stuck on that tangent because of the top that I'm about to do. And briefly, before I totally get into this top, I'm going to finish cleaning this up and you're going to see it switch to just the cleaned up top after I magically clean the entire thing. This is my favorite part. Here, we'll all watch together. Two, three, four, and boop, magic. It's all cleaned up. I sped this up a little bit. Anyway, these cute little cauldrons, how they are right now. My sister, Roxanne, she did a really cute design with these little cauldrons and then did these little like spires of bubbles going up. It was really cute. I wanted to do the bones and hearts and bats to reflect the interior design, but I would be remiss if I didn't mention that I saw her do it and I thought it was really cute and I wanted to do something similar. I'm sad that my bones disappear completely, but I love this soap anyway. So there's my little hearts. I purposely picked the ones with little black bits on them for fun. Here's some eco glitter. It's adorable. It's called Casper. I love it. Here's the soap right afterwards, the wet soap. And here it is again. And here it is dry the next day when I'm about to mold it. And let's go ahead and cut. So I was worried about how this would cut. Um, I put it on its side and it cut great. I, I honestly had no holes, no issues. I will freeze a couple of these so you can see it right about here. I mean, look how cute that is. It's adorable. I love it. But I turned it on its side because if you are using eco glitter, any kind of glitter, it tends to be scratchy. So that's why it's on its side versus straight up. I do still get a couple little drag marks, but overall, I'm happy with it. Anyway, thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed watching this and listening to me babble and have an awesome rest of your day. And again, thanks for watching.